appeal to you, right? Because you need light to see us. Light is electromagnetic radiation within a certain portion of electromagnetic spectrum. The word usually refers to visible light which is visible to the human eye and is responsible for the sense of sight. That is why you all can see us now. We students of grade 3 are going to share with you all about light energy with the help of your experiments. Light is a form of energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy can be found in the form of waves. Types of these are heat energy, mechanical energy, sound energy and light energy. So today we are going to share with you all what is light, what are the different sources of light, what is the behavior of light. How light and darkness impact life on earth? Light arises out of planet from the sun that is 149 million kilometers away. Light travels at a speed of 3 lakh kilometers per second. So the light you are seeing now was still tucked away in the sun 8 minutes ago. Put it another way, light takes roughly as twice as from as to travel from the sun to the earth as it does to make a cup of coffee. The sun's radiation is a source of energy for the earth system. The heat and light allow plants and animals to thrive. This radiation also supplies energy for many cycles among the atmosphere, oceans and land. Light is everywhere and it allows us to receive information about the world around. Light comes from many sources such as fire, light bulb, firefly, and torch, and of course the sun. Few are artificial light and few are natural light. Artificial light. Artificial light is man-made light generated from another energy source. Examples of artificial light are Light bulbs, tube light, lamps, etc. Natural light. Natural light is self generated and comes in a spectrum of colors. Example of natural light is the sun and fireflies. Light has few basic properties. Some are light travels in a straight line. Second, light travels much faster than sound. And third, we can see objects because they reflect light into our eyes. Light is a form of energy that travels in waves. Light can pass through some things but not others. Shadows are formed when light is blocked by an object. Here, I want to tell you something about luminous and non-luminous objects. Luminous objects are which emit their own light. And non-luminous objects are which re reflect the light. Now we are going to start the. So now we are going to start some few experiments. As you know that, that my friend Ashwin has three card books, and he has done small hole in the middle of the three card books. Now he's putting them in one line, and and from the and on the other side, with the help of the laser, he put light. We all can see that we can. We, and, and on the other side, we all can see the laser. If I should change the place of the cardboard, let's say the second. Then I should, then I should put the light again. We all, we all can see that we cannot see the light on the other side. So the conclusion of this experiment is that light always travels in a straight line. When we talk about the light, we see only one color in light, right? And the color is white. We see white light. But when we put light on the prism, it reflects the rainbow color of the other side.
So the conclusion of this experiment is that when the light passes through a prism, the light bends. As a result, the different colors that make up white light become separated. This happens because each color has a particular wavelength and each wavelength bends at a different angle. As you all see, light is a combination of seven colors which are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. When we talk about rainbow colors, we should know how it is formed. The words of each rainbow begins with millions of tiny rain droplets. The rain droplets serve as a type of reflector of light. White light enters one individual rain droplet and exits as one specific color of the spectrum. Without millions of rain droplets, rainbow would not occur. If you had only a few rain droplets, you would only see a few colors. This is typically why a rainbow appears after a rainstorm. Each rain droplet has a function in the function of the rainbow. Sunlight enters the rain droplet at a specific angle and the rain droplet separates the water into many different colors. Right now we have seen in the experiment that light travels in a straight line. Light travels through many matters but it does not travel sometimes. Now, as you can see, my friend Asabri has three objects on her table. A magnifier, a marker, and a plastic cup. Now, my friend Asabri will put light on these objects one by one. As you can see, a magnifier is a transparent object. It allows all light to pass through. A marker. A marker is an opaque object. It does not allow light to pass through. A plastic cup is a translucent object. It allows light to pass partially. So the object which allows light to pass through is known as a transparent object. An object which allows light to pass partially is known as a translucent object. An object which allows no light to pass through is known as an ob opaque object. Like solid or liquids also not enough light to pass through them. Here my friend Margaret has kept some holes on the table. This is water. It is transparent because it allows all the light to pass through it. In the next bowl there is ketchup. It is opaque because because it blocks the light. And in the last bowl, there is oil. It is translucent because it allows light to pass through it partially. So the conclusion of this experiment is that the objects which allow light to pass through are known as transparent objects. The object which allows light to pass partially are known as translucent objects. And the objects which allow no light to pass through are known as opaque objects. Now, now, did you notice what happened when the light did not pass through the object? A shadow is formed. Now my friend Ray has switched, has switched on the torch light and we can see that the light is directly coming on the wall. Now, if my friend put some object between his path, a shadow is forming on the wall. This, the size of the shadow varies depending on the distance between the opaque object and the source of light. The, the, uh, the shadow is large when the opaque object is close to the source of the light and small when the opaque object is far from the source of light. The conclusion of this experiment is Shadow changes their size. For example, if you if we take someone if someone takes his hand and places it in front of a candle or torch, you can see the image of his hand on the mirror on the wall. In this experiment, our source of light is candle, and, and the flame is moving. And along with the flame, the shadow is moving too. 
Here my friend Omanchi has has four objects and has in different directions and has placed it around the candle. Here. The conclusion of the experiment is light moves in a similar way all around. Shadows are caused by opaque objects blocking the path of light. As we all know, and we have seen that shadow changes its direction and sizes. Now my friend Summer now my friend Summer has a pencil as an object as a, and a torch as in sun. Now we see the sun is moving and the shadow of the pencil is moving in different sizes too. Long shadows are seen in early morning and late afternoon. Shorter are seen at noon. So the conclusion of this experiment is that when the sun is low in the sky, the shadow is biggest, longest, and when the sun is high in the sky, the shadow is short. Sundials are the oldest known devices to measure time. It is depending on the rotation and movement of the sun. As the sun moves toward east to west, the shadow predicts the time. The Egyptians were the first to use the sundials. They used a stick or a pillar called the nomen. The time was calculated depending on the length of the shadow. As you all know, the light travels in a straight line, and when it is obstructed by a shadow, when it is obstructed by an opaque object, a shadow is formed. Now my friend Summer, with the help of laser, is beaming a light on the mirror. As you can see, a patch of light is coming on the other side. If we adjust the mirror, we can see the direction of light has changed. So we understand that, that a mirror or any on a smooth polished surface can change the direction of light. This change in direction by mirror or light is coming back after hitting the smooth plane surface is called reflection of light. The image seen in a mirror is called a reflection. A law of reflection is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. There are two types of reflection, smooth or diffuse. In other words, irregular and irregular. The smooth surfaces have very tiny or unnoticeable bumps. Therefore, they send back or reflect right roughly at the same angle the light hits them. So we can see the image clearly. When the light falls or hits on a rough surface it, with noticeable bumps, it bounces off in many directions and back to our eyes. And, but as it is distorted and not clear, this type of reflection is called diffused reflection. So the conclusion of this experiment is that mirror or any other smooth polished surface when light for when a light ray strikes at a boundary of two media such as air and glass, a part of light is turned back. This is called reflection of light. We should remember the basic difference between shadow and reflection. It is that shadow only shows the outline of the object placed in front of the light source. Without any details and it is always black. But reflection shows the details of the object with the various colors.
surface of the water completely and the print on the book page appears to be held when the book is held behind the water. Now my friend Prisha is going to put her finger in the water. Now observe what happens. It appears thicker than the normal in the glass of water. When a ray of light passes through air and then through water, its speed changes. Due to this, there is a change in direction of the ray. The change in direction of the ray as, past, as it passes from oblique wavy medium to another optical medium, it is another optical medium with different optical densities is known as refraction. The refraction can make an object appear to be in different position. For the same reason, the part of a pencil or a coin appears to be moved when the appears to be moved above the part of appears to be moved above the part of the water and it appears fatter. The conclusion of this experiment is that refraction is the bending of it passes from one substance to another. Here the light ray passes from air to glass and back to air. As we know that when light passes from one medium to another, it changes its speed. And this change in speed causes a change in direction. This effect is called refraction. An object is visible if it reflects or refracts light. Now my friend Shivansh is going to take a simple glass rod and put it into the glass of water. And we all can see it clearly. But now if we take the second glass rod, and put it into the glass of and put it into the other glass which contains oil it, we can't see it it vanishes what is the reason for this in water we can see because a light travels through a transparent object and so and and so is water but but in, but in the other glass which contains oil, index of refraction is index of refraction is similar of the glass. Now my friend Shivansh is going to demonstrate another experiment. He is taking a beaker and adding some glycerine. water and oil in it. Now we can see that now we can see in the beaker now we can see the glass rod only in the part of water is visible but not in the not in the part of oil and glycerin it means it, it means oil glycerin and the glass rod have the similar refractive index now in the other beaker which contains vegetable oil which contains vegetable oil we ca we can we can't see anything but actually there is a small test, there is a small beaker in it. The conclusion of this experiment is when light travels through glass and then through oil, its speed slows down and on reflection it makes the test tube look invisible. This process of slowing down of light and diffraction through certain objects is called index of refraction. As you saw, the index of refraction makes objects invisible. Now my friend Prati has put some few drops of data in the water. The purpose of adding the dot in the water 
is to give a hazy look. Now you can see the light rays clearly. Now with the help of laser, he's he's pointing to the bottle and you can see the incident ray is going straight. But as he keeps bending the light, the moment the light strikes the water surface, we all can see that the light bends after the critical angle. And this is called as the total internal reflection. So the conclusion of this experiment is when light hits an interface between two different media it can partially reflect and partially refract so you know the so the difference between reflection and diffraction is that reflection is mirror like represent representation of an object being bounced back from another surface example as a mirror and diffraction is a change in direction of a state or an object due to due to change of a speed example lenses which we find in case of spectacles there are two types of lenses concave and convex now my friend aryan and vinisha will explain about it a concave lens is thinner at the middle and thicker at the edges it is also called diverging lens concave is generally used for correction in short sightedness A concave lens causes light rays to diverge. This phenomenon is responsible for the creation of virtual images. Therefore, an image created by a concave lens is always virtual rather than a real image. An example for concave is spy holes and doors. A convex lens is thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges, and is also called converging lens. A convex lens is for is used for the correction of problem in long sightedness this lens focuses the light rays upon the its lens and enables the thing to discover the detected sight a convex lens a convex lens a convex lens it happens due to the it happens due to the on the object and the object looks jiggle at its actual size some examples for convex lens are pinholes in cameras and over projectors so i think that we have all understood the importance of this marvelous invention of lenses so we all know if life were not invented everything around us would be dark and dangerous just as it was at the beginning of this presentation You would have used oil lamps or gas lanterns to see around us, but they were expensive. Oil lamp, policemen, and gas lamp and gas lamp would give off fumes that would stain the house for sure and kill the house plants. Not to mention the danger of everything catching fire. So how did the light come? Who invented it? Edison. Yes, you are right. Thomas Alva Edison invented the electric light bulb. But what good was an electric light bulb without means supplying electricity to people's home? Edison designed an entire electricity supply system from high voltage generators. In 1882, he opened the first public power plant in New York using generators driven by steam engines to light 13,000 lamps in homes and offices across nearby city blocks. So now with many developments through years of research, we now have electricity that travels through wires in the walls to the outlets, which switches all over our house. And a switch just like that. But not all around us are as lucky. Small towns and many villages do not have all the time electricity like we do. According to the World Bank, between 2010 and 2014. Population with access to electricity in whole of India was 75 percent. Mumbai is one Indian city that has always enjoyed uninterrupted 24-hour electric power supply. Be sharp, but what about the 25 next 25 percent? They have.
have power cuts, which means they get electricity only part of the day. Or in a few hours, they, they do not have electricity at all. The main reason for this is being because the main power is distributed to towns, big cities, for factories, production units, banners and billboards. All the expense of villages is going in the darkness. How can we help these people? We can all save electricity as you might have heard this famous quotation. Every drop save every drop of water save makes an ocean. So if all pledge today to save electricity, then we can save enough to give many lives. It's it should be all of our uh, fight that to save many dark nights. So today, all of us would like to share with you all some ideas, some ways to save electricity. Buy CFL bulb appliances which consume low energy and like LED bulbs and televisions. Switch off fans and light will not be used. Use energy efficient air conditioners. Switch on fans and open windows to get fresh air instead of air conditioners. Switch off plug for it's not being used. Do not charge mobiles etc. online. Keep refrigerator and low cooling. Set your laptop or computers on hibernating or sleep mode instead of screen saver. Use chairs when possible. Exercise is good for you. Switch off diesels when not in use. Do not keep appliances as TV etc. on standby mode. Wash clothes, wash clothes in washing machine which is full load. Avoid adding to the power demand during this peak time by simply using some electrical appliances before and after this time ban. Let the sunshine in. Switch off lights at daytime. Bijli bacha because saving electricity saves money.
चकलाता नहीं पर अंधेरे से डरता हूँ मैं माँ पर अंधेरे से डरता हूँ मैं माँ क्या कहा तुमने तुम अंधेरे से डरती हो क्यों भाई क्यों तुम अंधेरे से डरती हो क्या तुम्हें नहीं पता कि अंधेरी की दुनिया इतनी भयावह और उदास होती है जबकि उजाले की एक किरण बल्कि उसका एहसास ही हमारी सोच को प्रकाश में बना देता है अरे नहीं नहीं ऐसा नहीं है अंधेरा मैस अंधेरा तो नहीं उसका है अनेकों का इस बनाओ और अनुभूतिया आज अंधेरा दुश्मन नहीं दोस्त है मेरे भाई अंधेरा जीवन को उजाले की तरफ ले जाता है धीरज की परीक्षा लेता है अंधेरा यह संदेश देता है कि कल सूरज जरूर रुकेगा तब तक चैन की नींद लेते रहो आज का जमाना सुख की नींद हाँ ये तो सच है की आज के जमाने में सुख की नींद किसे मिलती है लेकिन इससे एक बात याद आती है कि समय से रोशनी का जाना और अंधेरे का आना सुख की नींद लेने के लिए बहुत आवश्यक है इसका ये फायदा था कि लोग पर्याप्त और चैन और सुख की नींद ले लेते थे आगे ही क्यों बदलती ऋतु से साफ सके तो पशु पक्षी भी ग्रहण ग्रहण कर अपना व्यवहार बदल लेते हैं लेकिन जब स्प्रिंग में दिन बड़े होने लगते हैं प्यू ग्रंथि मेला टोनिंग का श्राफ कम करने लगती है इसका हमारे गतिविधियों पर भी स्पष्ट प्रभाव पड़ता है प्रकाश पर या मेला टोनिंग बनने में कलर पैदा करता है इसीलिए सोने के लिए अंधेरा चाहिए लेकिन अति औद्योगिक राष्ट्रों में पहली दुनिया जिसे आज कहा जाता है बिजली के बल्ब ने दिन की अवधि 12 से बढ़ाकर 24 घंटा ही कर दी है और इन्हीं राष्ट्रों में अधिक अधिक लोग आज नींद से महरूम है वंचित है यही नींद की कमी मानसिक क्षमताओं में भी दुर्बलता ला रही है रात को मिटाने का प्रयास कृत्रिम रूप से सीमित पहर में रात को समेटने की कोशिश अपनी कीमत भी वसूल रही है देर रात तक काम करने वालों में महिला टॉनिक पर अवसर हासिल नहीं कर पाता वजह हमने रात की अवधि को कृत्रिम रूप से सीमित पहर में अंधेरे को उजाले से भर दिया है ले लेकर एक विंडो छोड़ी है रात के नाम आरोप मुंबई की लाइफ एंड लोकल की तरफ और उसे निकलने वाले मेला हमारे में टाइम की बहुत बहुत केंद्रीयता है इस कुदरती घड़ी में फेरबदल करना इस रिदम को तोड़ना शरीर को जोड़ना है आज नतीजन कुदरत के साथ संतुलन टूट रहा है सक्षमता कम हो रही है उम्र घट रही है बुढ़ापा लंबी और जल्दी पीन बढ़ा रहा है शरीर तो ओवर टाइम हो रहा है इस रोशनी की मनुष्य लाखों वर्षों से प्रदेश रहा है देश धर्म के बंदरों से ऊंचा स्थान रहा है रोशनी का हर जाति मजहब देश काल और माना गया है कहने को रोशनी के साथ सात रंग होते हैं लेकिन यह मनुष्य भी है जिसने उसे हजारों आयाम दे दिए हैं इंसान के लिए दिन के उजाले और रात में काम आने और नहीं बल्कि जिंदगी के हर हिस्से में रोशनी फैलाने से दे दिए हैं यदि हम रोशनी के इतिहास को सांस्कृतिक दृष्टिकोण से देखें तो भारत में रोशनी का तो भारत में रोशनी का त्यौहार दीपावली जिस तरह भगवान राम के अयोध्या आगमन को लेकर मनाया जाता है उसी तरह दुनिया भर में दीपोत्सव को लेकर अनेक कथाएं प्रचलित है और लगभग सभी धर्मों में और सांस्कृतिक में 
रोशनी का उत्सव साल में एक बार जरूर मनाया जाता है मसला ईसाई समुदाय क्रिसमस को दीपावली की तरह मनाता है इस्लाम में पैगंबर मोहम्मद मोहम्मद साहब के जन्मदिन यानी बारह वफात को चिराग रोशन किए जाते हैं सिख समुदाय में गुरु नानक के जन्म दिवस पर रोशनी सजाई जाती है महावीर जयंती पर जैन और महात्मा बुद्ध की जयंती पर बौद्ध धर्म मानने वाले अपने घरों से पूजा स्थलों को रोशन करते हैं पारसी तो है ही अग्नि पूजा वैसे लगभग सभी धर्मों में पूजा पूजा घरों में दीपक जलाना या क्षमा रोशन करना प्रतिदिन का रिवाज है मंदिर मस्जिद जिनालय चतरे में दिए और और गिरजाघर में गिरजाघर में क्षमा रोशन करना रोशनी का आराधना ही है मानव सभ्यता का इतिहास और मानव सभ्यता का इतिहास रोशनी का इतिहास है रोशनी के दर्शन के बारे में सुनते हैं मानव संवाद को कैसे एक ऐसी रोशन दुनिया बनाए जिसे किसी भी तरह का हल न करना हो ये चिंतन सदियों से चली आ रही है हर तरफ रोशन हो दुनिया आज के मानव समाज को हर तरफ रोशनी चाहिए सिर्फ घरों की बिजली नहीं लोग के दिमाग भी रोशन होने चाहिए शिक्षा की रोशनी हर ओर फैले धार्मिक राष्ट्रवादी और जातिवादी कटकता का अंधकार दूर हो अंधविश्वास का तमस छटे समानता का प्रकाश फैले मनुष्य जीवन के अंधकार दूर अंधकार और उजाले का संघर्ष सदियों पुराना है अंधकार और उजाला वही नहीं होता जो दिखता है अंधकार का अर्थ है अज्ञान भ्रष्टाचार काली करतूति का आश्रयदाता मान लिया गया तो फिर उजाला मुक्ति का मार्ग है हमारे ऋषियों ने कहा है अधिसो माँ से दुगमाए तमसो माँ जो तय घुमाए अंधकार कोई ऐसी चीज नहीं है जिसे सरकार मिटा दे उसके वो बेहतर वो बेहतर बिजली उपलब्ध कर सकती है अंधकार को कोई नहीं मिटा सकता उसके लिए आदमी को खुद आगे आना होगा श्री हरिहंश राय बच्चन जी ने लिखा आप आदमी को हौसला बुलंद करते हुए लिखा है अंधेरी रात पर दीपक जलाना कब मना है के प्रकाश में हमेशा कुछ एकाएक प्रकाशित दिखता है किंतु उस प्रकाश के पीछे अलक्षित अंधकार नहीं
Bonjour. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Ça va bien, merci. Comment allez-vous? Ça va bien, merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. Third. Third. How old is your age? Bisha Bhatogyan Suma. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Je vais bien. Bisha. Je vais bien. Merci. Comment allez-vous? Je m'appelle Suma. Comment allez-vous? Je m'appelle Bhatogyan Suma. Je m'appelle Bhatogyan. Quel âge avez-vous? J'ai 8 ans. Quel âge as-tu? J'ai 8 ans. Quel âge as-tu? J'ai 9 ans. Au revoir. Quel est votre nationalité? Je suis américain. Au revoir. 